Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voice recording for this slime between objects setup. It's very simple. I have discussed the major concepts in the past. As far as 3.6, not only are they still valid, but I've also recently uploaded the updated file for monthly subscribers. Therefore, in today's video, I will explain less and go straight ahead to complete the setup. As always, this tutorial uses presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. Tutorial files and related files are available for monthly subscribers. The overall concept is simple. You instance objects, shoot lines in between, turn down the middle region of the lines like hanging a rope, and instance other drooping curves, finally turning all of them into a volume and the volume to mesh to achieve a slime uh, like uh, organic look so let's start with an object and a node tree i need something we can instance i'm going to use the suzanne head just for fun let's subdivide it to smooth it out now we can pull it into a node tree to replace the original plane and now we can hide our original suzanne away in the node tree i will add random transform preset to scatter it randomly in space I will decrease the count to about 4, and I can use this translation value to increase their distance apart. You can also change the seed, but I will stay with the default value. Remember to realize the instances, as we will need to access these Suzanne objects later. Next, I will instance lines. Let's take instance on points and the curve linear. I'm going to turn off the center option and turn on the z-axis. I'm going to align rotation to vector using normal so we can so we have hairs on Suzanne everywhere. They don't need to be this long, so let's put it like 0.2 and like a thin and a short hair. And finally put a separate realize instance again before we do further deformation. Next step we will shoot lines to attach the curves to the other side of Suzanne. For that, we need to use recast. And we don't need too many points in this process, so let's turn the resolution down to 2. Then we have input Suzanne as target for our recast, and the curve tangent for redirection. Let's capture attribute for our recast result, especially the hit status and the hit position. Because we are going to separate the geometry at the spline, we include only the curves that actually hit each other. Then use set the position to attach the curve points on both sides. It's completed, but we also have too many curves. I will use a Boolean mass add and the random value to set up a probability so that only some curves will be included. Right now, these are straight curves with just the two points from start to the end. I'm going to resample them to add more points and duplicate with another set position so that we can drag them down. From offset, let's add a combine XYZ. I'm going to use the spline parameter which goes from 0 to 1 from start to the end of a curve and the float curve to map it to 0, 1, 0 instead. Output to Z, you can see we have these lines elevating from the middle region. If you remap 0 to 1 to negative region, we got a depression. But at this moment, they are depressing the same degree. I want a longer attachment to depress more. So I will call for spline length, multiply it with a factor. For convenience of control, I will add a negative so that I input a positive value, it will be turned to negative. Now you can see it looks much more natural. Now we have finished the basic setup of connecting lines. Next, uh, we are going to add the drips. In terms of array on curves, you may have thought to use the newest uh, Blender Essential Assets. The Blender Array node has the issue that uh, it doesn't accept the custom geometry inputs. It only accepts uh, object inputs along with 
many other design limitations. It looks like this node is more for modifier instead of the one for node tree. So I'm going to use my own array on curves to break things down a little bit. We still do the instance on points with curve linear, uncenter it and put it on the axis. You can now join geometry for our main curves and the drips. The curves are shooting to the sky. We can rotate it by 180 degrees to invert its direction downwards. We can tweak some parameters. First, I use randomness to give them a different length for each. Perhaps add a decimal shift to make them much shorter. Next, I will change some distribution about the array on curves using this custom parameter. I want to mostly distribute lines in the middle. So take random value node and set the start and end towards the middle region at 0 0.5. However, at the same time, we also notice some other issues. Those short curves also have these designed amount of drips, which I want to remove. So we are going to sample the original curve by its spline length. And among all generated points, only those curve lengths above a certain threshold will be selected to instance drips. So now our, so now our setup becomes much cleaner. You can increase the count and it will only populate the drips in our designated area. We've roughly achieved the mesh setup we are looking for. As mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, this is doable before 5.0. Uh, and uh, as taught by all the tutorials, we can do points to volume and the volume to mesh. So the setup is not really special or new. It only depends on what kind of mesh you have. But as we are in 5.0, we can do it in the new way for possibly a bit better performance and more functions. We have a point to SDF grid, which is a very specific type of volume and the grid to mesh. Immediately, we have this huge chunk of mixture. This is partially because we don't have enough resolution on both input and output. Let's uh, first decrease the voxel size using a value precision. By default, it's 0 0.1. It will be a bit tricky to deal with radius. For a quick result, you can take the same value precision and plug it in. The first issue you may notice is the connection has some breakages because we don't have enough points. Let's resample curve to add more points. Then we need to distinguish two pathways. Let's add a capture attribute and in N panel to add a socket set it to Boolean. I'm going to enable this Boolean so only one pathway has this toggle on and use this information to drive a switch. We will set radius differences by spline parameter and I will use a float curve to map each pathway differently. For example, we start with thick in the middle, thick at the end. And for the second one, like a thin at the start, thinner in the middle, thick at the end. For a border control, we can add remap zero to one after this switch. Now we have this uh, blobby look. We can increase the length of these strips. There are some parts extremely thin. So let's, uh, let's increase the minimum value so its thickness is not at zero. The reason we need to use volume, whether using old methods or new grid system, is trying to bridge these kind of connections during the volume to mesh process. And we can put a set shade smooth to smooth it out. Another key is a smooth position or smooth geometry to make it more organic. The rest uh, is parameter controls. For example, make it more precise, like voxel size 0 0.04. At the end, we can join geometry to add our them back. We can also set different materials for each pathway. 
In 5.0, as we have the new system, there is one extra thing that you can do is by SDF boolean, which contains intersect union and uh, differences. This is very important because up to now, the setup is doable in 4.5. These old nodes, however, mesh to volume and the points to volume nodes cannot be joined together for mixing. So you will have to use this SDF operation if you want to mix other stuff such as mesh. In this case, we just convert mesh to SDF grid, use the same voxel sites or not, and the union them and the boolean union them together before grid to mesh. Now you can cut the mesh to then now you can cut the mesh Suzanne linkage and you can see the Suzanne has been completely mixed with your slime. This is it. Uh, this isn't really complicated setup. It really depends on what kind of mesh you, or what kind of mesh or linkages you have. And then the core principle is really just the volumes. This is it. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.